guys, it is Michelle, and I have finished reading three more books, and so I'm coming at you with three mini book reviews. First up, I read An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Because this book had so much pre-release hype, I was wary, and it actually lowered my expectations. But in this case, I had nothing to worry about. You have two main characters. Your male protagonist, Elias, has kind of the classic boy with a destiny type story where he's in a militaristic type school and he's being trained to be a future leader but he's unhappy with the whole thing. Then you have Leia, your main female protagonist, and she's in kind of a classic storyline too where she's from an oppressed class and her brother is imprisoned and she's desperate to rescue him and willing to do whatever that would take. So their storylines are going to meet. So you have an alternating perspective. You have Leia, then Elias, and Leia, then Elias. Just keeps going back and forth. They both kind of have love interests when all of a sudden they meet. So you end up with kind of the two triangles, or kind of two love triangles, because they're now interested in each other, but they both had somebody else they're interested in. It's a little awkward, because... You can definitely tell the story is leading these two together and bringing them together. So go ahead and go along with the love parallelogram because it really does allow the author to show character, to grow, character growth on the part of Elias, but mainly for Leia. Um, it just, she just really beautifully uses that to show how Leia grows up during the story. There was a really awesome thing going on in the story. There are lots of factions, lots of characters, lots of individuals, and you're never quite sure what monkey wrench they're all going to throw into the plan. You're never sure how they're going to ally. You're never sure, you know, if they're going to undermine each other. So there were lots of surprises, lots of twists, lots of turns that you couldn't see coming in the story, and it was just really compelling and really interesting. But your side characters, they were very well written. You felt like you knew them pretty well. And then all of a sudden, you would either gain another perspective on them or events would happen that would unlayer something else about them. So it's almost like the side characters went from being two-dimensional to being three-dimensional. And I, just, I was just fascinated with the way she developed her side characters. I thought it was brilliant. This was touted as a standalone fantasy novel, but if you paid close attention, you could see lots of room, or actually if you were even awake, you could see there was lots of room for the story to continue. Um, the map you barely touched on in the story, and I read somewhere that Saba Tahir has actually planned a lot more storyline um, for our two main characters. So. There is going to be a book two. It has been announced, and I, for one, am excited about that. I gave An Ember in the Ashes four stars out of five on Goodreads. Next up, I read End of Days by Susan E. This was the brilliant conclusion to Pen the Penryn and the End of Days trilogy. There were rumors that this was going to be a five-book series, but I read on Goodreads that it has been finally determined that, no, this is simply a trilogy. So... I thought it was a fitting end. Uh, I love how when Susan E. writes these novels, there is this wonderful balance between the romancy parts, the political parts, the action parts, and the comic relief. And she just does a great job of balancing those out. I will say that this third book started off very heavy on the angsty romance side. I have no problem with that. But if you read for more of the other elements... Just bear with it, but know that the romance is kind of heavy in the beginning on this one. There are tons of surprises in store, things I did not see coming at least. Um, one that was just like, okay, that is just weird, but brilliant. Um, there were a couple of times I was confused, but after thinking it through, I was able to go, oh, yeah, I'm silly. I should have figured that out. The author just wasn't spoon feeding me, and I need to think for myself. <laughs> so I actually uh, like that. There were some new characters. Uh, they added a lot of action and a lot of insight, as well as some comic relief, so I love that. I love that Penryn is just so incredibly human and so believable. She's not, like, unstoppable in a fight. She's not, like, this leader that knows exactly what to do all the time. Um, 
So I love how human she is. I did think a little bit towards the end that that actually detracted from the story a little bit. And that kind of pulled you out of, oh man, we are really close to the end of the world here. So um, it was a little distracting for her to kind of not be focused on everything all the time. But at the same time, it was pretty realistic. So kind of balance each other out there. I just think it was a fitting conclusion for this trilogy. I adore this trilogy. I gave all four books in the series four stars and I love it. So unless Susan E's next book is about something I just can't stand, vampires, then I will be picking it up because I really enjoy her writing style. And the third book that I read was an advanced reader's copy that I got digitally from NetGalley and the publisher and that is Five to One by Holly Bodger. This book has been on my anticipated list for 2015 since way back in, I think, November. Um, it is set in futuristic India, so it's about um, 40 years into the future. And after a couple of generations of some population control laws, suddenly the ratio of male to female is 5 to 1. So what happens is the girls are sold off to the highest bidder. Well, one area of India decides they're not okay with this anymore. And the women kind of take control of the area. They build a wall around their area. They send out the men they don't want around. They build a wall, have people guarding it, some of the men. Um, and they, when a female turns 17 years old, she participates in a test to determine which of five randomly selected gentlemen from the age of 15 to 18 will be her husband and... Um, the goal is to try to produce more girls to balance out the population. So, your main character on the female side is Sudasa. And when you're reading from her viewpoint, it's written in verse. And it is just beautiful. The author does things with the font as well that really enhance the reading. It sounds gimmicky, but it's not overdone. Um, for instance, if she's talking about someone feeling like they're in the shadows... The word shadows has a shadowy effect to the font. Or if she's talking about something getting increasing and increasing or getting larger and larger, then she'll repeat the word and the font will get larger each time. It's just brilliant. It's so intuitive and I just loved it. Um, when you're reading from Kieran's point of view, he's your male protagonist. It's written in prose. So not only did the author give them distinct voices, but because of the prose versus verse... It's very easy just to instantly visually tell which character's perspective you are reading from. Now, he obviously is one of the five randomly selected boys that are in her test. She is running the test, but they both feel trapped by this system. Um, and so they can't really have just an out and out conversation. All they can do is interact during the test and she's more of an observer than anything. And so they're kind of starting to think maybe they want the same thing or maybe they're enemies. They can't really figure it out. It was just fun to read. I devoured this book. I read it in less than 24 hours. And that was after reading two wonderful books that I thought I would have a book hangover after. So I had no choice but to give this five stars. It was beautiful. I loved the prose versus the verse. I loved the story. And I actually think there's room for a sequel. So I can cross my fingers. I don't know. I don't know if anyone's ever thought about it, but um, I was like, hey, you could continue this story on and I'd be very interested to know what happens. So five stars. All right. That's a great set of three books that I just read. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading.